Welcome to We Are The City. This is a series of inspirational videos where we've asked some of the city's most senior women to share their inspirational stories with you. We hope by watching these clips you will feel motivated enough to go on and live your own career dreams. We really hope you enjoy what we have to share for you and once again thank you for being members of We Are The City. The reason behind these videos is to inspire more women to take up careers here in the city. So let's get started. I'm Dr. Suzanne Doyle Morris. I'm the director of FemaleBreadwinners.com and we specialize in helping companies develop and retain their female talent. Okay, um, so first of all, in essence, tell me what you do and who you are in a nutshell. In a nutshell, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, my main focus is around uh, looking at what it takes to be a female leader and what are the traits that successful women have, particularly women in very male-dominated fields. Mm -hmm. I spend my day doing anything from coaching one-to-one -one women who are looking to get to the next level mm -hmm. in their career. I also work with uh, groups of women, workshop style, in organizations, and I write and spend time researching what it takes to get to the next level, essentially. So I'm passionate about what is it about women who work in male-dominated fields? How do they not just survive, but how do they thrive? And is this most sort of uh, prevalent in the city, or are you talking about any industry? It tends to be, it's really, uh, many industries, once you get to be more senior, yeah. you get more men. And so where I tend to work is with women who are aiming for top management mm -hmm. and maybe just below maybe in what they call the marzipan layer, uh, women who are not yet board level, but aiming for that. And that tends to be more prevalent in the city, certainly. Okay. But I work with women in IT, financial services, uh, legal area, so a lot of different areas, but they all share a very common theme, which is that they work mostly with men, and they have to make a credible case for who they are and project that sense of gravitas. Is gender still a massive issue here in London? I think gender is certainly a big issue globally and what I'm really excited about is that we are seeing so much amazing research both in the city but also globally about what an educated women, women do for the economy, for families, for GDP as a whole and I think that women in male dominated fields are an area where women need support mm -hmm. to get to the top and if we do that we will have better bottom line results but a more just and more even, a more equality-led society, and that's really only a good thing. Um, okay, so you've written a couple of books, um, Female Breadwinner being um, one of those. Is your second book? Yes, it's my second book. Um, obviously, the, the title was a bit self-explanatory, really, um, but why did you write this? So I was fascinated by the number of my clients who were the main earners for their families. So we would be in coaching sessions and it was never the main issue, but it would come up. Mm -hmm. They would talk about perhaps a promotion they were they had just got and they said, I'm delighted and I know my husband will be happy, but there's a little bit of him that wished it would probably wish it was him that was bringing in a bit more okay. extra money. Or I'm thinking about going for an international placement, a, you know, a, a time abroad with my company, but I need to check it out with my husband because he's what keeps the family ticking over at home. And it was really interesting and it's something I really started noticing. I think that we focus a lot on do women have children as a sign of commitment, which clearly it isn't, and also how far they're going to go in their career, mm -hmm. which is really unfair. But I actually think there's another issue, which is who are these women married to and what I found in my career working with very high achieving women is that the women who get the furthest often have the most supportive partners oh, but I'm fascinated I'm fascinated yeah. by this because what I see is that this is the way we're going as a whole in society we're, gen we're graduating more women out of university so the reality of the female breadwinner the woman who brings home more than her partner and maybe in some cases brings home all of the family mm -hmm. money is only going to increase and, I mean, it is, isn't it? Even mm -hmm. you know, in my generation, it, it definitely is. You know, the, yeah. we were all career people, and we, we're not just happy just to be at home anymore. I think that's mm -hmm. long gone. Mm -hmm. um, and in my personal experience, a lot of my friends and family, the, the woman is is the main. Yes, and around. what's so exciting, and why I felt compelled to write the book, is because both men and women are having to renegotiate. Mm -hmm. Uh, gender roles, roles yeah. <laughs> that have been you know laid down for centuries Absolutely. and it really causes it can cause resentment and competition 
but it also has some really good side effects as well where it can cause it creates support for one another they can give so much and but the thing that's really fantastic is that they have so many more options mm. as couples because they can choose what they do and who is the main earner based on their personality and what they like rather than you know I must be the earner because I'm the man or I must stay at home because I am the woman yeah. it's about how do these most successful couples how do they manage this dynamic because as far as I'm concerned, it is something couples can work successfully around and need to because this is only going to increase. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about the challenges that you must have faced in your own personal career. I think that my main challenges, um, two challenges come to mind in particular. One was deciding to specialize, mm -hmm. which um, is ironically the thing I would recommend to other people, to other women who want to get on. But for me, deciding to specialize in working with women in male-dominated fields, when I set up the company, people thought I was crazy. They said, well, there's hardly any clients for you. There's hardly any women in these fields. And I said, that's the point. But this, these women need to be served. They need a voice. They need people who understand them to help them move to the next level. Um, so choosing to niche took a bit of a leap of faith on my part, but it was aligned with my passion around helping women and my academic background, because my PhD from Cambridge is about women in very male-dominated fields. Yeah. So it was a nice marriage for me, but a lot of people thought I was crazy. Yeah. If, I mean, obviously, we, uh, you know, we've got We Are The City viewers that are gonna be watching this. Mm. If you could give them a bit of advice, they're either maybe thinking of a career change, or they want their promotion, or maybe they just want to go for a new job, what would, what would you say to them? I think that one of the key things that I've had to be comfortable with, and I work with my clients to do as well, is getting comfortable with 80% perfect. What I mean by that is a lot of the women I work with are very high achieving and have often got to where they are by thinking they're doing it all themselves and keeping the control and, and being the perfectionist. I mean, it's, it's the great thing we love to say, you know, it's just easier if I do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And everybody says that, mm -hmm. but actually it isn't. And sometimes you're gonna have to give away more control and more power to other people around you. And you build a great team that way. But if you don't get comfortable delegating and, and you know, being ready with things, whether it's projects or even the laundry. You know, maybe it's not folded the way you want, but if your husband did it, you know, you gotta go, gotta go with it. And, and, <laughs> and I think that's fantastic because really, if we can get comfortable with 80% perfect, we will make the people who work with us as well as our own family lives just run so much better, more better. <laughs> I love that, 80% perfect. That could be the title for your next book. It I could, think that's it a could. Great, it is. Lovely, well, it was great talking to you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.